This is Fanspeak, a weekly live show where the fans of comics and its community are our guests. Welcome to the show, everybody. I am Chester C. Busby III, and we are on Fanspeak. Uh, we got some uh, fun things we're going to get into, get into today. We're going to do a little bit shorter show than we usually do, but uh, uh, that's okay. Uh, there's some obligations and stuff, so we want to get right to it. Uh, and of course, uh, we have Brad with us uh, today from Pencil for Life. Uh, how you doing, Brad? Awesome. And uh, we're going to be uh, watching uh, Brad as he uh, uh, does uh, a page for his upcoming uh, Indiegogo. Why don't you give us the name of that, man? Tell us a little bit about it. That's a great, great pick. I like that page. Cool, though. Mm -hmm. Hold on a second, Brad. Hold on a second, Brad. My, uh, my, uh, mics dropped off here. Go ahead and try again. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so I, I don't do yep. a lot of detail in my layouts. I just, uh, um, just or or my pages, uh, I, I uh, get to where I want it, and then I do all the detail and inks. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, hold on one second. I think I'm having a little bit of technical difficulty here. For, uh, yeah, no check. worries. Um. So, uh, hello, Valenid. Uh, and uh, uh, Valenid says, "Hail, Raven. How am I supposed to watch three streams at once? Watching Jean Luc EVS and this stream right now. Well, thank you very much for involving us in that. Dave say can here, Brad. Uh, is this a silent stream?" No volume on Brad. Okay, I believe that's fixed now, though. I, I think it's repaired. So uh, you guys tell me if you could have heard him when uh, I came back over. So, Brad, you why don't you now? go back to the top of that, and let's do that again. <laughs> the top? Yeah, okay. the top. So, everybody, uh, uh, Brad has got an Indiegogo coming up in 15 days or so. Um, yeah, and, February uh, 15th is launch day. Yep. Yeah. So, February yeah, 15th. Sorry, I moved away from the mic. I'll, I'll, I'll go back to it, but... Yeah, so I'm just working on the pages. We're going to have the first uh, seven to eight pages so you can read it, you know, see if you like it. Um, go from there. So I, I want to put you straight into the action. Um, this is actually oh, probably the, the first 10 pages of the book, but I took out some of the flashback scenes so you guys can just skip right to the action, you know. So, um, and then, uh, yeah, so... It'll be a uh, it'll be a fun uh, fun ride that's for sure. We're definitely gonna be violent. We're gonna be action crime oriented, but we're also gonna be dealing with um, a per pretty horrific crime too. You know, child exploitation. So um, yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, it's gonna be a fun book. You know, think of, like the Mexican Punisher. You know, there you go, Mexican Punisher type feel. Yep, mm -hmm. a la John Wick. All of John Wick, yeah. Or, all of, uh, you know, uh, John your, Dillard, yeah. John Wick. This is this is what John <laughs> Dillard does when he crosses the border, you know. Right. He's not he's not just game of the system. He's a hero. He is a hero, but the problem is he doesn't <laughs> speak any Mexican. He speaks zero Mexican. Actually, I speak more Spanish than he does, uh, which is really sad, dude. <laughs> of course, no, Danelli's no, cool. a, a perfect yeah. uh, Spanish speaker. Um, but um, that's cool. Mm. How many languages do you yeah. speak, uh, Danelli? Uh, solamente dos. Pero estoy practicando el tercero que es japonés. Well, there you go, guys. 
Um, and of course, Thundero has just dropped in here. How you doing, man? I'm all right. What's up, Thundero? How are you, how you doing, buddy? I'm breathing. Uh, breathing we can out. barely hear you, dude. Right. You need to turn it up. Oh. Speak yeah. into the mic. And he's <laughs> all right. Man. Uh, so that's no problem. Uh, all right. So we're going to leave this on here and let you guys uh, watch. Uh, uh, what Brad is drawing here, because we're going to come back to uh, and speak to Brad in more depth about his uh, Indiegogo project that he has coming up called The Handyman. Uh, but of yeah. course, we're also joined by uh, the Denali Lama here. But uh, before we get to that, just keep in mind, check out all our links down below. And uh, of course, we really appreciate you guys hitting that share button and letting everybody know what's going on. So Denali, how are you doing this fine well, morning for me, but evening for you? How are you doing, man? I'm doing dandy. Just being spicy, as you know, notice. Oh, yeah, you're, you're <laughs> spicy today, that's for sure. We yeah. have a spicy Denali. Yeah, hot enchiladas. Sure. So, yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> it's a hot enchilada. I like yeah, hot yeah. enchiladas. I like I like lots of hot things. Oh no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. All right. <laughs> you already no, went no, there. No, 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 you already no, went no. there. No, no, no. <laughs> the wolf save us. Save, save us from Chester. Uh, yeah, I will. Uh but uh just to catch up real quick. Uh we have uh Willie Reed says, uh, Chester Busby, let Brad know. I think he uh his Brooks and Dunn hairy lips are beautiful. Uh thanks, man. I appreciate that. You know. Very good. You know, people people like those uh those hairy lips you know they do you don't see a mustache very often you know you don't so. man they've they've fallen out of favor that's for sure well i'm going to take the uh white box off you for a little bit brad uh that's and fine. i'm going to because it is of course as you all know here on fan speak it is time for the chairman's lecture mr dewolf <laughs> <That's> <laughs> lecture that was address okay that fine was address. go along with that chairman address Production, protection, and provision. These things, these qualities are what manhood is truly about. You see, currently we hear about toxic masculinity and, and the fact that it may be out there rampantly, which is completely false, we know, of course, and especially within our comic books, right? Because, we, because first off, I think we should define some toxic masculinity, which they don't ever do. Toxic masculinity would be that aggression, right? Violence, uh, boisterous, uh, up to the point of being obnoxious, right? So these things would be your toxic masculinity. We do see that in comic books. We see that in the villains, right? This aggressive tendency to want to fight and go after people. That's that's villainous type, type aspects. But all the way back to the 50s, 60s, and 70s, what do we see actual heroes doing those people that we idolize we see them using concepts such as production protection and provision that's right production is that thing which men do to create there and we see this through uh, reed richards he has a lot of creative potential and he makes things and then gives them out to others you also have protection this is of course a, a big one for many of your, of your superheroes they protect the weak the innocent and even concepts of uh american values values morality they protect big concepts as well as small ones and then there's provision those that actually provide things for others this is a very man-based concept as well because you see this within uh x-men's uh, mentor Right. He gives mentorship as well as the ability to be housed. Right. So Professor Xavier gives us this concept of provision for other people's sake. And we see this today in our own in our own manly concepts because men produce. They create all the time. We see that within Comicsgate and all of the other Alterna comic uh, creators that are out there. They're creative. They want to build a comic book. They have, of course, have. Uh, provision because they're providing for their family and, and some 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 time for others and then of course finally of course protection because we've all come together to protect each other protect values that we know and love we don't want to see of course those things that are toxic masculinity within comics gate so leave that to the villains because we know that we hold on to the concepts of real manhood that exists today in every man in the majority out there of production, 
protection and provision. So we continue that on. And of course, that's what I'm saying. What are the fans saying? And a welcome to fan speak. All right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, I produc I productionated uh, babies. Does that count? <laughs> um, ab halfway. Oh, sweet, sweet. I'm I've given something to the world. <laughs> you give a lot more than that. You you you. I know you. Of course, you have a job. You provide for your family, but you also provide for your students, and I'm sure you care for each and every one of them. And if they have issues and problems, you, you help provide that protection as well. No, well, you know, all jokes aside, that's actually a very true thing. Um, uh, being a teacher, you are do become very protective of your students, of course. Um, and uh, being over here in Japan, where you can actually talk to them, interact with them, you can actually even pat them on the head, or uh, you what? know, or what have you, you can interact with them, you know, mentally and fi and physically. Um, it, without, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 you be your bond with them becomes much more sophisticated, right? And uh, yeah, right. Yeah, right. no, I'm, I'm extremely protective of my kids. Yeah, and, and and we do joke about that, but we see that. I mean, look at look at uh, John Dillard, uh, Todd Maruni, you know, um, all, all these guys. Mike Mike Miller, mm -hmm. right? He's there with his his, his kids all the time, and yep. he's providing for them. He gives them that mentorship, and he's all very protective. You know, so this these are real man qualities, and we have it all all here. And we need to, uh, I think, glorify that instead of. The, and in, in not all this you know, junk that's going on that they accuse us to have in our comic books, which we know we don't have them. No, no. Comic books are, uh, you know, if you see, you see someone who is uh, overly violent or bigoted or something like that, this is traditionally the villain that is being uh, being yeah. dealt with by the hero. I mean, it's kind of the it's qualities true. that uh, that the hero would fight against, right? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's well, the point. The, there's the Dark Knight. Dark Knight, Wolverine, Lobo, Deadpool. These guys are sophomoric, but at the same time, and sometimes crass, you know, and, and, and rough and gruff. But then when you get down to it, they're off. They're often they're helping people, and helping people is a very manly attribute. Well, it's the same as Miguel is in the Handyman, you know, that I'm doing right now. So, I mean, he he he's doing it to protect children who can't protect themselves, you know. Yeah, no, that's so, a very classic yeah. uh, trope of a hero, dude. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, since you mentioned Miguel, uh, in the handyman mm -hmm. and, um, uh, me knowing that you're of some European persuasion, how dare you write a Mexican character, sir? How dare oh, you? Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. That is an I'll interesting point. So I'll repent. You know, what, what, what gave you the idea of, uh, going South of the border and, uh, um, so when we started like, you know, brainstorming about the book, we were like, you know, what could we do? You know, what, where it could be from? We're like, well, you know, a couple of my friends who are at the shop are from Southern Mexico, uh, from Southern California. They're half Mexican. They're like, you know, what if he's like a Cholo or something like that? I'm like, well, you know, what if he's just a illegal alien? You know, that's how it started. You know, what if he's an illegal alien, you know? And I'm like, and he's trying to trying to do good, trying to repent, you know, and, and stuff like that, you know, just trying to stay low key. Cause he's like wanted by someone. And that's how we came up with, you know, he's uh, maybe he ran away from the drug cartels, you know, well, what was he doing at the drug cartel? Like, Oh, what if he was a former hitman, uh -huh. you know, and, and, and you know, layer by I layer. Watched some, uh -huh. Yeah. Layer by layer. We added it on there and, you know, and we came up with, um, you know, well, you know, I watched a thing on Juarez, Mexico, you know, because there's tons of drug problems down there, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and so, we're like, get... okay, what if he's from a cartel down there, oh, you know, and then, yeah. So then when he goes back, you know, in the story, he finds something truly horrific dealing with kids. And so his, his intentions go from that of a self serving nature to that of, Someone's got to protect and stand up for these people, and so that's why he's in. He is so in he's basically so. El Chapo Castile. What? I get it. I, I, I don't just know. Just making is, but... a, I was making a very sideways oh. uh, Punisher joke, dude. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, let's yeah, that's what he ends up doing. So. Cool. And uh, 
Yeah, I, I actually think we need more uh, uh, south of the border heroes, actually, because, you know, we all know the reality in Mexico is, is not a good thing. There's a lot of bad stuff going on, a lot of corruption. Yeah, yeah. And But we also know that the majority of the people are just like everybody else. They're good, normal, yeah. honest people. Uh, and they're in a very dire situation. And uh, uh, so I think uh, promoting um, the idea and, and heroic concepts of... Uh, uh, of uh, you know people in that situation is is a good thing actually. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, uh, Superman and Captain America they were made or- originally to uh, fight Nazis and the greater mm-hmm. threats that were ra- around the world due to the war. And we don't have that kind of a war at this point going on. So what you've seen over the past many years is these you know made up concepts. Well, the galactic threats, right? And so like Thanos. And so now to see this, this is this is you know very interesting because it's once again it's world based. It's something that's really going on, mm-hmm. and you can put your hero right in the middle of that. But you of course have to be a little bit more inventive to find that story because it's not as easy as just throwing them against you know a, a Germany, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and personally, I think drugs, you know, and you know, drug, you know, the the violence along with drug the drug empires right now is way more way more brutal than i think world war ii probably was to be honest i mean you know oh, mexico really bad, yeah. you know hundreds and hundreds of deaths you know, a month well, yeah, no, you know that's true and it, yeah. but it's also when you look at uh, say the european theater for instance you still had that old world concept of the honorable war and uh the yeah. gentleman soldier right now in the pacific mm-hmm. theater this wasn't true the japanese were they don't care about any glory or honor. They don't care about that stuff. Win is the only thing that came into their mind. Uh, yeah. But in the European theater, that's ex- extremely true. Uh, whereas the things that these uh, cartels do are just barbaric. Um, even they're they not even barbaric. They're savage. Uh, they're, ver- but, uh, they're very savage. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, Cairo. I mean, yeah. Sorry, I was gonna say they. I, I watched videos from Juarez where they would, you know, hang people as a message from overpasses. Yeah. You know, and you know, and dismembered bodies and stuff. It, it's it's really sickening to me. No, and, no, it's uh, much worse than that, dude. They're really, yeah. really bad. It's just degeneracy, really. Uh, mm-hmm. Chronos Chiron says Mexico is number two issue. Go look up Brazil, and there's far, far worse. Three times uh, as many people died. Yeah, no, um, uh, South America is worse than Mexico. It's true. Uh, Mexico has its problems. Got a lot of corruption. Um, it's not as bad as South America. It's, it is true. And and the lower Central America is really bad, too. Uh, but uh, we do have ERTs in here. Hello, sir. Don't forget to smash that like button. He says, well, that is awesome, dude. Please do that. Hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't. We appreciate it. Hitting that share button is really awesome as well. And uh, ERTs wants, uh, wants to know, is John Dillard the villain? Mm-hmm. I, I would, I would uh, No, actually, uh, the villain, my buddy wanted to play the villain. Uh, in the, in the book, even though you know, just for fun, you know, so he paid me to put him in the book as the villain. Really? <laughs> just like this, yeah. So just because he wants to say he was in a comic book, so oh, that's cool. I was dude. like, okay, <laughs> I'll do it. You know, so uh, I'm getting some pictures of him this weekend, so we can uh, make him look like it in the final pages here coming up pretty soon. So, so I got a question for you. Yeah. And this, this goes into the creative side of this. I think you mentioned the brutality of, yep. uh, you know, what's going on and, and how uh, that will also be expressed within the book. Uh-huh. When you when you have a hero dealing with kids, I would also think that that would also appeal to kids. So um, having that brutality, being able to see to be sort of diminished or, you know, off the panel or more alluded to instead of direct. Uh, is that is that a possibility so that the the kids yeah, could get certain, into the so certain certain panels will be you know uh not it'll just be alluded to you know but yeah uh, with shadows or yeah, you sure, know, yeah, a frank yeah. miller type style. Innuendo but, is, is but some of it though it, it's going to be direct you know okay because um, yeah the, i think the more kid appropriate it can be you know that audience would be would would like a protector you know already oh, yeah um he's beyond that dude yeah, I'm kind of way beyond that. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, okay. <laughs> I get your point. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. So, like, if I, if in some other books I got contracts for later this year, uh, they are going to be more kid friendly and 
they will be, but this one's definitely more adult oriented. Yeah. So, uh, you know, older teen to adult, you know, uh, type type format. So this is oh, not, well, that is good. Older teen, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No. This is not for you know little kids. Now so. keep in mind, guys. Uh, we're of course we all know Brad. Uh, he's been here on Fan Speak for a, a long time, chatting with us. He's got his own channels. He's got his new comic reviews, which I love doing with him. By the way, we got our previews thing. Uh, so we all know Brad, but uh, he's he does have a project coming out. So sitting here talking about it with him and his ideas and uh, concepts of his thing is really cool. Um, so uh, please ask questions. Uh, you know, uh, hit yeah, that if you chat questions, and, please hit me up. Yeah. yeah, interact with us today. No. Uh, to this uh, first part of our show today, we really want it to be interactive like that. So please do. Uh, Nick W says, "Have you watched Sicario, dude? I watched both se- both seasons. Uh, I love that. Uh, I haven't that watched show. Sicario. No, that's really good. Well, it's got uh, it? uh, Benicio del Toro, and that dude. Oh, just, okay, you know, he he kind of sucked in Star Wars, but it wasn't his fault." Um, when you put him in a proper thing, a thing that's appropriate for him, that dude is a solid actor. Solid. That's good. Mm. Yeah, no, I haven't watched that one. Um, I've watched, uh, what was it, on Netflix, Narcos, um, most of Narcos, and then a couple other drug ones too, but God, I hate the, I really hate those guys. <laughs> Like, yeah, no. This is this is why like I, I don't mind killing them in my book because I'm like, dude, these guys are total a holes, you know. So yeah. no, yeah. I went when I was growing up, um, you know, we had <clears throat> uh, we had some conflict in our area. It was nothing like some of the stories I've heard from other people. We certainly had conflict mm-hmm. and we were always, you know, you got a mix of Irish, uh, uh-huh. Italians. Uh, we had a bunch of black people too, but they they weren't really the issue. <laughs> uh, but the, you have these Irish and Italians, and of course we're always fist fighting each other. It's just kind of standard thing. Uh, but we did ha- also have some um, a Latino people in the area, um, and uh, actually my aunt's si- uh, daughters they all married uh, Dominicans. Uh, so mm. I you know and I I love going in, uh, over their house and chatting with them and eating uh, eating their uh, wonderful food and drinking whatever that uh, whiskey moonshine the thing they make is and watching boxing. Uh, but uh, we didn't have any of the cholo type of thing in the area mm. except for okay. one dude who was I think from Puerto Rico I think and he wanted to play the part of the cholo. He was acting, right? And he wanted to be a drug dealer and he wanted to be the, yeah, yeah. he was he was trying to be something, right? And uh, he's the only one, but he was like more of a joke than anything. It was like the, oh, look, it's the Cholo cosplay. Uh, but uh, <laughs> so I didn't really grow up with yeah. any of that, you know? Yeah, I didn't either. So I grew up in Seattle, but I grew up in a really rough part, uh, just outside Seattle in SeaTac. Mm. Uh, that's where the airport is, but has a really, really bad. Like it used to be really nice when I was a kid, but it started going downhill pretty quickly after we moved there. And uh, it's now like you know, it's horrible. Lots of drugs, lots of prostitution. Wow, you know things like that. So yeah. well, we've seen the degeneracy of many yeah. cities in America. Actually, oh yeah, it's it's kind of crazy, you know. Um, so I grew up in a really rough neighborhood. Like when I was twelve, I had a gun to my head by a gang member. Oh yeah, you know all all because I punched one of his guys who was who was uh he, he was like trying to steal uh, my candy back in the day, you know, at, at school. And uh, I got super scared and I punched him. I hit him pretty hard. And, you know, cause I was a fat kid, but I was always the big kid in school. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember like this lady came out in the hallway. It was like, you guys all right? I'm like, no. And uh, mm-hmm. I was like frightened as hell. You know, I was like 12 mm-hmm. and uh, he was probably like 15, 16. And I punched him right in the jaw and I went running. And uh, mm. but his gang caught up to me and had a gun to my head at one point, and then they just let me go. And some people came by and I, I took off, but you know, we moved not too long after that, which is nice, <laughs> but no. it, it sucked. Yeah. I've never been actually shot at. I, I've drawn through it, I, I drew through uh, an area of New York in the Bronx back in the 80s, mm-hmm. which was probably a stupid thing to do, and uh, <laughs> a, a stray bullet hit my truck. How crazy. Mm. But they weren't aiming yeah. at me. They were fighting, doing some stupid fighting over there. And the yeah. bullet just kind of, it was like some, I don't know what the hell they were doing. I just continued going on my own way. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Jimmy over here says, uh, Benicio equals reeking awesomeness. <laughs> he does, dude. Yeah. I love that guy. He's very awesome. Um, 
Uh, Kronos is talking about uh, lowering taxes. I spent Switzerland dropped sixty percent in uh, crime legalization. Everything uh, I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, yeah, if they salt off America, you might tackle. Uh, it might trickle into Mexico. Maybe. I mean, Mexico is certainly not as bad as, uh, like, say, Honduras or El Salvador. Jeez, I mean, El Salvador. And maybe literally it's mainly just there. parts of Mexico. It's not all of Mexico. No, no, of it's, course not. No, no. It's no. just parts. It's yeah. really the government, you know, because the cartels are kind of almost openly in charge of it, you know. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, no, there's plenty of normal places, nice people. And I've met a lot of great Mexican people. They're just people, mm -hmm. right? Um, this isn't about Mexicans. <laughs> it's about drug dealers. Um, uh, let me see. What was this I was uh, doing here? Um, not fighting. Oh, yeah. Thundero has decided to not fight his mic, and he's just going to stay in the chat. So, again. Uh, so, Thundero, here's my suggestion. <clears throat> Buy a new mic. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, Jimmy Ortiz says, Mama Juana. I don't know what that means, but awesome. Uh, Chrono says, they have an El Chapo video documentary where one of the farmers thanked the Canadian and American governments for cutting back uh, the pain meds on people there because they, uh, cause they know will sell more heroin. Uh, okay. Um, They'll now sell more heroin, right? So basically oh, stopping the, uh, the yeah. medical opioids means oh. that people will now go for the illegal drugs instead. Ah, I see. Okay. Interesting. Uh, ERT says, uh, this is their homemade moonshine. Yeah, it's really good. Have you guys ever had the, um, well, I don't know. Uh, this was Dominican. I don't know if it's kind of a universal thing throughout the Latin, Latin uh, countries, but uh, the, the Dominican moonshine uh, that I had uh, was really good. They, what they, it's kind of cool, too. They have like these big, uh, giant glass jars. I mean, they're really tall. I mean, like, uh, I don't know, three feet tall. No, well, uh, maybe not that high, but uh, a really big glass jar. And they fill it full of like peppers and fruits and stuff like that. Um, and it was, uh, really, I really loved it, actually. It was delicious. Because I've had Southern Moonshine, too, and that, that, that just burns. It doesn't really have flavor. You guys ever had Moonshine? Nope, I don't drink. Well, I don't really either, but I mean, you know. <laughs> no, you try it's stuff not, out. I don't, I don't, no, I don't. So that's not, <laughs> that's more like a flavored moonshine then. So they took yeah. the alcohol and then they poured it, they put it over other things mm -hmm. to, to take up uh, on all those flavors. Yeah, fermented in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really mm -hmm. good though. Because we used to watch, um, I, I, I don't know if you guys have listened to me and Jimmy talk, but uh, uh, I love boxing. I mean, of course, I I'm Irish. And I grew up in, uh, you know, every we every all Irish are required to uh, take boxing as a child. It's like uh, our law, I think. Um, and uh, law. Well, I think so. Uh, so, and they of course they love boxing too. And uh, they were a big. Um, um, oh man, his his name just went out of my head. Of course, Camacho, uh, and um, Cesar Chavez. Uh, we'd go watch boxing all the time over there at the house. Really good food, too. You guys ever had uh, Puerto Rican or Dominican food? Oh, yeah. Really good. It's nothing tough, like Mexican yeah. at all. It's not similar nope. at all. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, well, I think one time uh, back in the old Air Force days, yeah, we had a Puerto Rican uh, Puerto Rican guy there in the in the shop, and he, he brought in some food. Yeah, you're right. Good stuff. It's really good, dude. Um, Thundaro is is ranting over here. Just everyone, look at the rage. You can see, you can feel it oozing through the chat. And Thundaro says, "This is a new mic. I'm not buying another one. If this uh, not won't work, I'm done. Period." <laughs> Dude, uh, I'm very busy this weekend, but uh, next week sometime, you and I will get on a hangout, and I'll try to help you figure it out, dude. I'm sure we can get it working. Uh, it's just, it's a, you're a boomer. You're a boomer. And I'm older than you, too, dude. You should be ashamed. Ooh. Boo. Jimmy Ortiz <laughs> says, Mama Joanna is a Dominican moonshine made with roots. Oh. Well, thank you very much. I didn't know that. I thought you were, you were, you were simply uh, insulting me. Awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dave says so, moonshine has a flavor kerosene yeah exactly <laughs> probably is yeah. oh, southern moonshine just burns dude it has no flavor at all that's true Kronos Cameron says Irish have odd traditions yes we do and uh, just think about all those odd traditions that have, have uh, trickled down to you in the world today all that dancing and the amazing writing and singing and music all those things you you uh, have to give credit to the irish for that you don't even realize you should 
Oh yeah, yeah, and and of course, you know, let's, let's not forget that at one point the Irish were the second class citizens all across the northeastern you know seaboard. Oh, for a long oh, they time, still dude. are. Yeah, they still yeah. are. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's funny because yeah. people talk about poverty, and poverty is an, is an issue, right? It is. Uh, but I mean, the actual poorest poorest group of people in America are the Appalachians. And when you go into those communities, they're super poor. They have near zero crime rates. They have very strong family uh, structures, meaning not a lot of single motherhood. I mean, et cetera, et cetera. They are very peaceful, nonviolent, non-criminal people, even though they're the to poorest group of people in America, right? And if you don't understand what that means, the Appalachians are white people. Yep. Yeah, 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 right. Red. You've right. also seen that through, um, of course, the there, there's the Irish. I think along came the Polish. Uh, I, I'm not sure if the Polish were before or after or both. They always get a bad rap. Oh, they, they oh no, every group bad, that comes yeah. in gets a bad rap until they build themselves up, right? Um, and while right. they're while they're doing that, they're the ones that are laboring away building things like great dams and bridges and all uh, and cities and stuff. That's that's the thing we've had over and over, generation to generation. Each wave of immigration has come in and offered something to America and made America better. Each generation, uh, no matter where they're from, right? Uh, mm -hmm. it, yep. It's only until this current situation, and, and, and of course we have to keep in mind that Mexicans or people from South America have always been coming to America. This is not a new thing, right? Yeah, and they have been part of our, our landscape and, and part of our growth and the things that brought us to where we are, are the whole time. But this current wave that's going on, they're not coming to America to make it better. They're not coming to America to be part of the American dream or the culture or, or, or you know, the, the patriot, uh, patriotic thoughts that uh, we all want to have toward our country. They are there simply to make money and send it back home. It's a very different right. wave of migration from before. And that will tear us down. That will tear us apart. And yeah. it's too bad because we've seen this before with Mexicans and other people where they were very much a part of what the growth and things that went on in this country. This is a new. Yeah. You, you see that amazingly in the story of Texas, you know, cause, yeah. and then, the, then there were Texians cause they were both, uh, white Texas, uh, Tejas people. And they were also mm -hmm. Mexicans and they lived in, in union. And then of oh, course, yeah. because of the oppression that was coming from, uh, Mexico, you know, in, into that group that was, it was Mexico. So those people decided, Hey, you know what? Uh, we did it with the British. Let's, let's not do it with the, with Mexico. And we'll just, we'll just take this land, make it ours because, uh, Davy Crockett, even he, he told them, he said, y'all can, y'all can go ahead and take America. I'm going to Texas because even, even back then people did not like some of the things going on in Texas politics. I mean, I'm sorry, in American politics, right? D.C., the government of D.C. was a problem. <laughs> this yeah, is age old as well. And so, yeah, they created Texas. They, they fought back uh, the Mexican oppressors. That why they even decided to join back up with America in the first place, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But the handholding between uh, the Mexican people and the white people and the, the indigenous people mm -hmm. that created the, the Western society, you know, Really, if we could get back to the, that concept, it was a it was a, a nice a nice land, you know. Uh, people wore guns, people took care of problems, and it eventually did get civilized, even with all of that going on. That's true, and uh, <clears throat> the interesting thing too is, uh, for a period there, we actually had pretty good relations uh, south of the border, but then it just uh, it has not been good in a long, long time, um, and that's just politics. But um, now this uh, this uh, story you're doing here, Brad, uh, we've kind of covered mm -hmm. that it's a Punisher-esque, uh, you know, uh, person. Uh, he's dealing with Correct. cartels and he's a protector and a hero, even though he's an assassin. He's 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 protecting the innocent type of dude, Correct. Uh, which, mm -hmm. of course, is a standard hero. Now, um, uh, before we move on to our news for today, do, do you want to add any other little details, maybe some spoilers some hints or something like that? Um, I don't want to give you spoilers away. Uh, I mean, I think I've given like a lot away already, <laughs> probably more than I should have, you know, but, um, we're going to have some, some fun, different, you know, artwork, some covers available. Uh, you can get original artwork from the, the book, you know, coming up, you can get some, uh, you know, original artwork from me, you know, uh, coming up as well. 
Um, so it's going to be a good time. There's going to be a lot of good stuff coming out. Uh, I learned a lot from the last time um, that we did this. So uh, hopefully uh, it'll all go well. <laughs> and uh, we'll get funded this time and you know, make it happen. You know? It looks really uh, great. So. Uh, can you show that Dutch angle uh, uh, pick again? Which one? The Dutch angle page, the full page. It's got the Dutch angle. Oh, on. oh, oh. Oh, you're talking about the, the worm the worm's eye view? Yeah, well, <clears throat> okay. Yeah, the title page? Yeah. Yeah. So this is the title page of the book. Yeah, bring it up a little bit. Yeah. There you go. That is this, uh, bring it down a little bit. <laughs> you're too far. Uh, right there. No, stop. Yeah, that's a beautiful page, man. I like it. Nice. I like, I like the yeah, bell bottom. All of them suit. are going to be cut. All, all... <laughs> Uh, all of them are going to be colored like this, uh, and then we'll have a splash of red on there for, you know, the blood and special effects and things like that. So, yeah. Chester, those no. are boot cut jeans. Yeah, dude. Well, whatever. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> whatever. Got to keep you keep him honest sometimes. Oh well, yeah. you know, I just say it as I say it as I see it. Uh, but uh, Vale is selling us my boat notification. Uh, my notification just popped up for fan speak. Twenty minutes late. Twenty eight minutes late. Yeah, that's YouTube. Thank you. <laughs> Chrono said, yep. "My dad gave me two sets of boxing gloves at eight and sent me into the neighborhood." Lol. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, thanks, Bill Gates, because uh, of Windows. Okay. Uh, people are picking on Thundero, and he stopped talking, so I think he's miffed at me. I do apologize. <laughs> I love you, Thundero. I love you. Kisses and loves. Hugs, even. Um, and uh, EORT says, I'm always trying to culture you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know that I have any yeast problems, but, you know, that was a joke, by the way. Uh, Dave says, remember the uh, the Alamo. Uh, what is it called again? <laughs> goodness bell bottom equals boot cut absolutely all right well no it does not you seem to have some disagreements <laughs> here all right guys so let's go get we're going to go ahead and we're going to move over uh to our uh news today uh we are doing a little bit shorter show, uh, show than we normally do uh so i'm going to put this up for you guys to see it then of course let the panel see it as well because you know otherwise it's gonna be kind of hard to talk about it right right uh sure all right all right, here we go. Go ahead, Denali. Introduce our first news of the day, man. Lead Wanell to tackle Escape from New York remake for Fox. Basically, they're talking about that John Carpenter is going to be executive director. Uh, Lee uh, Wanell is writing and possibly directing the rebooted Escape from New York, but. I don't know. I mean, I can remember the original um, film, and it, the plot lines are forgettable. It can, it's a dime a dozen. The real star, the real power that made it so exciting was Snake Bliskin, was Kurt Russell redemption of that character. Yep. And yeah. And this is what they have to do: is whoever they choose for this reboot, if it gets off off the ground, and they actually start producing this, they have to get a actor of that caliber into snake bliskin and make him memorable. And I just don't see it. I don't see it. Not mm. there's no batches of actors uh, that I've seen recently that can do a, the amazing performance that Kurt Russell has done for snake bliskin. He did. Well, Kurt Russell is awesome in general. Um, but um, yeah, no, I, I, who who do you get? Because this is it's true. Uh, Snake Plissken needs to be a straight up badass, and and who can do that? I guess Tom Hardy is the first one that comes to my mind, but he's kind of short. You know, you know. I think part of it isn't just him. It's it's the era. You know, that era when it came out. You know, this picture says a lot. It's that grittiness, uh, that thing that that thing that we we knew from the original Star Wars movies too, right? There was there was something more visceral about it, and here you get that that same thing coming on. And I think you know some movies are just set in there, even though they may be timeless. They're in their time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. There, <clears throat> there, there, there was something mentioned that. Uh, George Lucas said during the production of the first one that he wanted a gritty, dirty future. And he would always had to stop the floor production people from wiping and cleaning the floor because he, he wanted it scruffed up. And I believe that 
the movies now are so artificial that it's too clean. They're too clean. Even the dirt is too clean. If you <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. In a way. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. It's too. Uh, it's too patterned. It's not random. It's not. Uh, it's not uh, visceral. Uh, Nick W. And, some, is, and, is and just... slightly campy. Yeah. Right. Like the running man. Oh, there's yeah. something slightly campy in that as well. You know, a, a death race 3000. There's some, there's some campiness there, but we liked it. Oh man. Did you see what they've done with the death races since the original one, which was fun, man. They just destroyed that franchise. It's horrible. Uh, yeah. It's really horrible. Yeah. Uh, Nick uh, W is just sighing. Uh, Dave says that they should make a ROM movie instead. I don't know what he means by that. Anybody know that? Does he mean the comic book? ROM character? is the comic book character. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I would love that. He's a he's a cosmic space knight. Oh he's no, I, I know ROM. I love ROM. I just didn't know he was uh, how he switched gears like that. Uh, Chrono says uh, Adrian Barbeau. Hmm. Drools. You talking about the female? Aloha, everyone says yeah. Manny from Good Dog Press. Uh, but <clears throat> yeah, Manny. I don't know, uh, Brad. Do you want to see a remake of Escape from New York? Um, yeah, I don't know. <coughs> yeah, I, I'm afraid they're gonna make him a soy boy, you know, uh, you know, character. You know, mm. I mean, I'm gonna see, you know, if they if they're gonna make it or not. Do I want him to make another one? Not unless they're gonna guarantee he's gonna be a man's man, you know. Well, he would need to be. Yeah. Otherwise, it's yeah. just a parody. Um, but yeah. does do any of us or anybody in the chat have a suggestion? Who would be a good actor these days to play Snake Plissken? I mean, who could pull that off? Because Kurt Russell just killed it, but he usually does. Uh, but you know, Honestly, he, he yeah. Like... Uh, God, what's his name? I can't forget his name. What does he do? Uh, was he in? Guardians, yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, oh, that dude. What's his name? Yeah. Pine, Chris Pine is that his name? No, 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 no. Chris Pratt. No. Chris Pratt. Oh, Chris Pratt. He's the other Chris. I think he'd be fun. It would be a very different Snake Plissken. It would be kind of a um, jokey, you know, cool. He is a man. Yeah. He is a man, well, though. But he, well, yeah, he could pull that. Yeah, I think he could do it. Because honestly, Kurt Russell has done a lot of films where he was silly and not silly. And I mean, come on, he was in Overboard. He was, you know. And all sorts of these weird movies, you know. Yeah, yep. he was well, he, so, he was a musketeer. Well, and sure. Yeah. Classically and trained did, by. Yeah, you're right. He Disney. did. He did that really well. But yeah. do you think Chris Pratt can has that kind of range? I could, yeah, I think he could. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Yeah, I mean, uh, are possibly Brendan Fraser? No, no, not anymore. Well, his his role in the Mummy was was pretty good. Yeah, but. That was how many years ago now? A long time ago, yeah. yeah. I, if, yeah. yeah. Okay, then if I'll you know, go with Katie ben, Stack ben Affleck, I'm, they're getting slapped. All right? Just keep that in <laughs> mind. All right? No, I, I go with Katie Sackoff. <laughs> Dude, they <laughs> might do that, man. They might actually do that. Jenny Katie Sackoff from yeah. Longmire? I mean, she is rough oh, no. and tumble. Yeah, I yeah. like her. I like her from quite a bit. Yeah. Balsar Galat. Longmire, yeah. I, I like her long, uh, long, uh, Longmire more than I did in Battlestar. Oh, much more. I hated, I true. hated that Battlestar thing, man, but I like her. Oh, That's yeah. not the point. I have no problem with her. I like her quite a bit, but no, do not gender bend. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, you no. can even do the Longmire Sheriff. I think that'd be kind of cool. Oh, well, yeah. You know what would be God. interesting? If they do gender bend her, if they keep the snake tattoo <laughs> where it was at. <laughs> probably not. I get, uh, it'll probably you know? be on the back and it'd be thick. It'd be, it'd be a tramp thimp. Um, anyway, Starbuck, yeah, that ridiculousness. Um, uh, oh, uh, Valnid says, Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah, yep. baby. That, yeah. that was a sweet movie. I love that flick. The, the Three Storms. Oh, man, that was a killer movie. Yeah. All right. I'll, uh, well, anyway, it's certainly something to ponder, and uh, I can't think of anybody offhand who would do a good job of that. Uh, Lorenzo says, hello. That's, well, hello to you, sir. Yeah, and that's the problem, is that we can't think of anybody currently that can do that. Yeah, because Hollywood soyed out, you know. Or just not the right soy actor, soy you know. Yeah, but, so go with something original. Give us an original story. Yeah. Make something up. Actually, the guy who did Altered Carbon. Uh, the white, the, the white guy, actually. which I like that that dude. Yeah, that hey, that's not a bad idea, dude. Now, he was, that dude but he has was in Harrison Robocop. Ford, Ford, uh, Harrison Ford type of feel to him. That guy. Yeah. 
Yeah, but he was in RoboCop remake. Yeah, but he was really good. Uh, in all the I think he <laughs> redeemed himself. <laughs> Trusty sidekick said they'll probably just get Will Smith to play Snake. <laughs> actually, might not be that bad. Will can pull off action. Actually, hopefully they don't get Jaden Smith to play it. Oh God! Oh, uh, God. Stop I'm it! We got to move on. We got to move on. Before. Joel, bad. I'm Joel, Joel next. Can, uh, okay, yeah. Denali, tell <laughs> us about this uh, this nonsense here. All right, Burger King trolls McDonald yet again with an entire menu mocking the Big Mac. <laughs> this is um, the reason why Burger King is doing that because they are making fun of McDonald's loss in the EU for trying to trademark a uh, Big Mac. So oh, yeah. they can't, so they can't trade Big Mac in the EU, um, which is kind of funny because well, of everything. Um, no, specifically no, go ahead. No, it's Ireland where they won the case. I don't think it's specifically just the EU. I think it's specifically just Ireland. Because yeah, they had no. a restaurant out there named Yeah, uh, but Ireland is part of the EU. Yeah, but their laws so, aren't gonna extend to everybody in the EU. It's just I think it's just in, in yeah. Ireland. Yeah. Well, Burger King has been doing this for quite a while, actually. They keep trolling yeah. on them. And it's funny, it says not Big Macs, like a Big Mac, but actually big. Burger Big Mac wished it was mm -hmm. the kind of uh, kind of like a Big Mac, but juicier and tastier. The anything but <laughs> a Big Mac, the Big Macish but flame grilled, of course. Mm -hmm. well, so, in the kids uh, with the kids meal, this type of trolling deserves a rainbow brute to come with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Le Wapa Royale. Kronos Kryon says, Kyron says, yeah, no, I think it's just funny. I mean, Burger King keeps doing that, uh, this, and they actually sometimes friend, uh, remember the, the two, the big Burger King, and the McDonald's were right next to each other and they were using their sign outside signboards to kind of joke back and forth. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, yeah, I think it's fun. Uh, all in good taste. I don't know if, uh, uh, McDonald appreciate McDonald's would appreciate this one. Uh, but, uh, I think it's hilarious. And it, besides a Whopper is much better than McDonald's anyway. It's in good taste, yeah. And it, but I'm, it's just good fun. <laughs> Thank you for uh, enjoying yeah. my pun. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to equal you, DeWolf, because you are the pun. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> looks like the wolf was wolfing it down. Oh no, no, no. next. <laughs> Go ahead, DeWolf. Uh, CBS CBS orders Frankenstein drama pilot. Yes, he solves crime. And yes, it's from EW. So, of course, it's going to have that snarkiness sure. in the headlines. Um, it is an interesting little synopsis here, though. Uh, it says, uh, this latest and very loose adaptation of Mary Shelley's classic novel follows a San Francisco homicide detective who is mysteriously brought back to life after being killed in the line of duty. But as he resumes his old life and he and his wife realize he isn't the same person he used to be, they zero in on the strange man behind his resurrection, Dr. Victor Frankenstein. dun dun da Okay, I probably didn't do that very well. I've seen this before. <clears throat> Oh yeah, I've, it's called Car Fifty Four. Huh? <laughs> no, Car Fifty Four, because the actor who played that also played Herman Munster. Oh, yes, yeah. you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> uh, who was the Franken? <laughs> uh, Goodness gracious! I don't know. I don't Are know. they going to film it in San Francisco? Probably. I mean, why uh, wouldn't you? I don't know. Because all that it's human expensive. shit on the sidewalks, I don't know. I might be a little. Oh, that's a good point. But maybe that'll add to the mood, though. I mean, because we know San Francisco, Californians have a real lot of trouble. They're, they have lost their way, uh, for sure. San Francisco has yeah. uh, become an actual, and it's too bad. Because I was in San Francisco what 18, 20 years ago, and it was a pretty nice place, actually. I mean, you know, uh, but it's gone downhill really badly. But yeah, it's um, a dumpster it, fire right now. It is, it is, yeah, and it's too bad. Cause I wonder if they're doing the show there because uh, to get people to come back and visit because a lot of people are not going anymore. Well, maybe, so. uh, but uh, um, I do know that there's been some really good movies come out of uh, San Francisco. One of my favorites is called Bullet. Really good movie. Yeah, that's, that's before. Mm -hmm. that's oh like yeah, definitely from ago. before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
But anyway, uh, I don't know what there's much to say about it. Uh, any comments on this, uh, Dwolf? Uh, Frankenstein You know, it, it, it's possible. You know, a lot of times when you get these type of, uh, I would, it's not crossover, um, borrowing one genre and then moving it into another, it, it can be fairly interesting. You know, we're seeing that with Graveyard Shift, right, coming out. Sure. And then er Eric Withers' uh, comic book where he, he uh, parodies off of Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. So those look good. So this might have a chance. We could also use the word bastardized, though. Oh. Mm. Car 54. Car 54. Car 54, <laughs> where are you? I go back to that. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, there's not much really to say there, but uh, eh, maybe we'll keep an eye on it, I guess. Uh, next little story here um, is... <laughs> go ahead, Denali. Vice Media to lay off about 10% of the workforce as the digital media takes another hit. Yeah, well. And it's our, our ongoing story of all the extreme political left leaning <coughs> shield <coughs> um, digital media, you know, are having a lot of layoffs. We've mentioned this before. Mm -hmm. And yet again, another one hits. Well, that's fine. That's fine, he says. <laughs> well, now, you've given us yeah. some interesting information before, Brad. Why don't you go ahead and tell I us did. about this? Yeah. So, um, came out recently, uh, I want to say within the last week, that NBC has two major donations to two major organizations that are digital organizations for media that um, are not disclosed uh, normally. Uh, one was Huffington, well, a couple of them, Huffington Post, BuzzFeed, yeah. and Vice. They all received about $400 billion from NBC. And which this should have been disclosed because it came out because uh, NBC was uh, always quoting BuzzFeed on all of their news sites. They thought something was weird about that. So, and it turns out they were they were donors. They were contributors to oh. the channel. So, yeah. Well, no, they're all. Yeah. It's all incestual relationships when it comes to those people, anyway. Correct. Yeah. Well. Here's something interesting I, that it just occurred to me. I read today that employment is still on the rise, right? Yeah. Overall in America in that's in the manufacturing industry. So blue collar uh, manufacturing industry employment around the nation is actually going up, but we're seeing the, this type of the media, um, blue hair media, <laughs> Can I say that as well? Yeah, is going yeah. down, right? People are saying, "Hey, we we want real stuff. We don't want crap, whether it's uh, you know, it, it's art or not." Yeah, you know, anti-Trump all the time is not going to sell you stuff. E I mean, exactly. That's very interesting, yeah. especially because they don't bother to complain about the things uh, about Trump that are actually you could complain about. They just make up oh, yeah. make up stuff. I mean, come on. I mean, I don't yeah. get this. There's plenty of things to go after Trump about quite easily, but they never stick on that. They always go for this <clears throat> made up uh, fake news stuff. I don't, I don't get this, the logic. It's illogical. Yeah, the Russia probe. Yeah. The, yeah. Illegal and, donations or whatever. I don't know. It's stupid. Well, you know, the weird thing about the Russian thing, um, they're trying to you know, make this, oh, you talk to Russia. So what? There is nothing yeah, actually illegal about doing that. Why can't he talk to her? He's a businessman. Why can't he talk to Russia? What are you people on about? We're not at war with Russia, right? So I mean, it, that that in itself is stupid, right? And politicians are talking to everyone. Of course, many actors with it within, within the Middle East, Russia, both sides are doing it. You know, South oh, America, sure. well, it goes around and around. It's fine for Miss um, uh, Miss Clinton uh, to go out and talk to Russia and make a deal selling American uranium as a Secretary of State, but yet Trump <laughs> can't do it as businessman. What the hell are you people talking about? Yeah. yeah. Wow, we got political. Woo. We did get political, but it's dumb, dude. I hate <laughs> stupidity, dude. Um, but I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's a whopper of a story, though. It is a whopper of a story. It is. <laughs> but I'm just... uh, yeah. Dean, uh, Dina's in here. Hey, congratulations on your winning the fan edition yesterday, Dina. Yeah, she congrats, really cool Dina. Piece. Yeah. We're well, looking forward to seeing you on the pro edition next week. Uh, and she says they will wash the streets before they film anything, just like New York. Uh, well, to be fair, uh, when I was in New York was when New York was actually an issue. Uh, New York has improved quite a bit. 
And uh, Willie Reed says, here in Canada, we had a we had a uh, kick-ass show about a vampire cop called Forever Night, dude. I watched every episode. I like that show. Yeah, but it's Canadian. You have to take it with a grain of salt. Grain of salt. A. A. Yeah. I, yeah. Did you guys, did you guys enjoy Forever Night? I, I kind of like that show. Of course, he had the the classic mullet, but you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah it, was it, was, it wasn't for me. No, that's all right. No. Nope. Vampire. I think I was. Uh, I was watching something else at the time. I don't remember. Yeah, well, um, there's always something else, I guess. That's true. Always something else. Always something else. <laughs> what is this here? Nick W says Chester and uh, uh, Denali. Uh, did you see the Star Wars One Dozen Roses for Valentine's Day at <laughs> Entertainment Earth? What What is that? What is he talking about? Um. No. I didn't I see know. it. Google it real quick. No, I don't know. Yeah, check that out. Uh, all right, we're getting. Uh, uh, let's uh, let's see which one we should we talk about here. We're getting a little tight on time. Uh, we have yeah. this one, um, which is just stupid. Uh, we have this one, which is mm, kind of interesting. We have this one. Oh no, let's do this one. Let's watch a trailer. You guys want to watch a trailer? I want to watch a trailer. Yeah, sure. Let's watch a trailer. While Brad looks that up for us. Here we go. Uh, no, I'm drawing, dude. Sorry, all right, man. So, uh, all right, <laughs> fine then. Um, I thought you said you were, but uh, yeah, just no, uh, you, should, you should Google it up. Oh well, thank you. So you were oh, okay. I get it. So Nick, if you could explain a little bit better there. But anyway, let's uh, watch this trailer here. This is for Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw official trailer in HD. Here we go. I'm dealing with the future of the planet. We gotta save the world. I like this dude. I'm the necessary shock to the system. I am human evolutionary change. Okay, what are we doing? Where are the world are we going with this? Superhuman. Who the hell are you? Bad guy. Uh. The mission has been compromised. We need help. Wow, they've really gone in a completely different direction. Our target's name is Brixton. He's a ghost. He's a ghost. We're gonna need the best trackers He's in the business. Re- He's replaying just the same character from nice cold can, Star Trek we'll Beyond. Oh yeah. Career lawman. Always gets his guy. Yeah, well, this is gonna be fun. We're I gonna think need to going operate outside direction. the system. Deckard Shaw. He doesn't have to wear a champagne problem. I like this dude, though. He's awesome. Rogue former MI6 agent. Doesn't play well with others. If oh. we stand a chance against Brixton, you guys have to work together. Two guys that don't good. like each other. No, no they're Ace way. and Maverick. Together they'll be Maverick Ace. But they, they're actually going into the supernatural. Or the Good super job. tech, I guess. Yeah. Super tech. Yeah. Requires yeah. stealth. Look at you. I'm um, trying to save the world, which, for the record, will be my fourth time. Fourth time. Fourth time. Fourth time. Fourth time. Because I'm really good at it. You have no idea what we're dealing with. Oh, yeah, baby. Hobbs and Shaw. So what does it look pretty good, dude? You want a war? Theater fun. You've got one. If you want to play this in the video, remember me? You yeah, no, it have looks like that. Of course, Brick's not a bad guy. He's a sure. guy. One, two, three! He was just smoking everybody out. There's a lot to this trailer. There is. Good trailer. It's a long trailer. It is. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, man. okay, okay. I like Three it. Three shocks will kill a man. There we go. Oh, the bad guy's speech. You had to open your big mouth, didn't you, huh? Yeah, I thought it was a cool thing to say in the moment. <laughs> good deal. Good fun yeah, okay. movie. All right, I like that. I like that. That looked good. What do you guys think? Captain Siskel, Captain Picard, and Worf in an 
action flick yo <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe please oh Viola doesn't seem like it please no um uh, i thought that was look look much better than the other fa- fast and furious i've seen it's not fast and furious at all it's a it's a spy no, it's, not. it's like a movie. buddy buddy spy movie yeah yeah <laughs> well, that's cool I, I liked it uh and uh nick w has come back in there and uh said that um uh entertainment earth is selling 12 rose tico action figures in a bundle uh give your sweetheart <laughs> a dozen roses for valentine's day rose tico that is <sighs> right they, hate, they, they okay. hate customers yeah. supposedly i think they just have extra dolls hanging around so Probably well, they couldn't the sell them. Get, the guy get rid of them. Ethan's the only one buying those tico. <laughs> yeah, Ethan's the only one who wants to buy. Cutting their heads off and such. <laughs> I have to say though, that video where he went and he bought all well, those he, rose ticos and put them on people's he's, he's, windows. He's just trimming the rose, you know. You know. Oh, oh, oh proper. Oh, oh goodness gracious! They, we need to put a stop to this. We it's need to stop material. the puns. It's bad, bad. Bad pen. No, we can't let it die. It has to be resurrected. <laughs> Choice of Psychic says, masculine, uh, masculinity at its finest. Yeah, dude. That looks like a good, you know, bro movie. Awesome. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it's going to be a bro movie. That's right. uh, it is. But but then cool. again, do we don't hear, you don't hear us sitting here complaining about chick flicks. We have no, no problem. Right. They can have do all we, the chick flicks they want. Do we watch trailers for chick flicks? No, of course we don't watch no damn trailers for chick flicks. Of course not. I know. I'm just saying, but we, we might go to them because our wives and girlfriends are like, "Oh, go see the movie, okay?" You know how many Meg Ryan movies I've seen in my life on a first date? Seriously, no. I don't you know. didn't yeah. like you Met Sally? Yeah, it was all right. Sleepless in Seattle? Eh, no. You are old enough. I'm sure. Of course, I know those movies. So that's not the point. <laughs> my point is, I have no trouble with chick flicks, man. Why? They're more than happy to, and and men go to them. You because got mail? We go on. Oh God! Stop your mail it. wasn't bad. I actually liked that one. That was bad. So here's the reason why this one looks good because it goes back to Snake Plissken. It goes back to Blade Runner. It's instead of a spaghetti western, and I'm going to coin a new term here. It's like a cheeseburger action thriller. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, what about that's what Jason? we like about it? It's what about Jason? As Snake it's, it's a little bit. Of, it's a little bit of junk food. You know, it because the, those old spaghetti westerns had a certain style to them, and they were enjoyable to watch. They, they didn't have to get too deep. Maybe they made a statement here or there. And so back then, that's what we liked: action but fun, and like, kind of like a cheeseburger. And and finally, someone it looks like they're going to be making another one of those. It, to answer your question, Chester, no, because Jason plays Jason. It's like asking John Claude Van Damme to play somebody else, but he ends up playing John Claude Van Damme. How Denzel about, Washington. What do you mean? Yeah. He did that. It's called Street Fighter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he what, did what that about, with, what about, with a show called John Van Johnson. <laughs> what, what about uh, Idris Elba? Yeah, I like him. I he's thought a really that was great. Actor. Yeah. I kinda, but, I'm kind of sad he's not 007, to be honest, right now. No, no. Get out of here. No way. That's a Sorry, I, I want to. No, I want to. I wouldn't mind seeing him as 007. No, no, no. Is 007 it is not the same actor? They've they've said that it's just an assignment code, you know, for whatever agent has that no. one. Well, what no? What yeah. they should do is they should take the current actor and do put Idris in there as 00 whatever, uh, and just do a spin off. Assistant. Yeah, maybe. No, just just make know. him a yeah. Just, just but to have a that, that Craig's more... doing one more movie. Craig's doing yeah. one more movie. After that, he's done. Yeah. So so spin it yeah. off. You yeah. don't have to replace it. You don't want to do that because that's going to piss a lot of people off. You know, uh, you All know, right. race swapping, um, uh, Snake Plissken will anger some people, I guess. But he, he, you know, we know Snake Plissken, but he's not a he's not a you know dozen twenty movie in character. He's not that kind of character. So having him uh, 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 race bent, uh, I, I I don't think would upset me actually if they picked a good actor and they did a good job. Uh, but Double O Seven, no way, dude. No, it's a, a, see, 007 is a code name. James Bond is a code name. No, no, it is. Well, James Bond is yes, not a code is. name. No, it's not. Right. No, it's 007 not. is. They've made him you're out right about be. the number. You are right about yeah, the number. Yeah. 007 is, is a code name, but James Bond isn't. <clears throat> I don't know. We'll that's been up in the air back and forth for a while now. That, yeah, I know. That's, that's, that was a theory, and that was a rumor that the production team 
shut down quickly. And they said, no, James Bond is James Bond. Yeah, he is James Bond. Yeah. But I mean, nothing against Idris Elba. I love that guy. He's really cool. Right. Uh, yeah. Oh, he also he was so good in Firefly and Serenity, dude. Oh. Um, but uh, oh, yeah. if, you, if you guys wish well, to be disturbed, well, uh, Willie Reed says Fifty Shades of Willie Mammoth. No, no. Well, uh, Chester, mm-hmm. Chester, mm-hmm. what what would your thought be if they introduce a new Double Seven that isn't Jade Spawn? No, I would, would introduce Double O Eight, introduced by Double O Seven, and I do a spinoff. Give him but a that, really what cool I'm th- name. Th- what, what I'm saying, if Double Seven is just a number. Does it always have to be James Bond? That's double seven. I see. So you're just replacing the number with a different named character. Hey, we probably could do that. Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be fine. Yeah, I mean, because I'm open to you know that happening because I like the actor and I have faith in the uh, the movie's going to be at least good. You know, because I don't think I've ever seen a really really bad James Bond. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, so yeah, I think that'd probably work. But I don't know. It, there's a there's a fan base to uh james bond that uh is is very serious about their fandom we, dude. you know we could call the movie king over the arches <sighs> wow dude you, you know like King <laughs> kingsman <laughs> what they could really do we could i would like to see someone maybe redo leonard part you know seven but like maybe leonard part uh, five or eight because you know, since Bill Cosby is incarcerated and mm-hmm. and oh. is taking that down, we need to see another Leonard movie. Sure. Is he gonna but, drug people? No, I think it should be Rick Moranis. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it would be. Hey. That would be awesome, dude. I don't see he them. I don't kitty. see them trying to make Leonard again. But he, uh, he no. little kitty have one of my pudding pops. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know, but I think it's it's kind of akin uh, to taking Shaft and making him some uh, Chinese martial art guy. I kind of think it's the same thing of uh, putting Idris Elba as James Bond. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I, I don't see it, but that's all right. Yeah, I, I get the 007 thing. I think I'd probably go for that. All right. Just the number, just the name, the name change, you know. But so you have no problem with Idris Elba being actually James Bond. No, uh-uh. huh? That's interesting, but I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, to to be honest, I mean, to me, be... it's it's like you know, uh, what's what's his name? Shield uh, agent uh, Nick Fury. Uh, Nick Fury. Yeah. Yeah, but see, Nick yeah. Fury is kind of a background character, though, so it worked. But here's the thing, though, yeah. so with with your analogy, um, if if they did an Idris Elba, there would be controversy, of course. But if they did him as James, actual James Bond, and it was a really good movie. Nobody, most people wouldn't care because it's a good movie, right? Same thing with Nick yeah. Fury. It worked so well, dude. I can't yeah. even imagine some. I mean, compare him to David Hasselhoff. Nah, dude. I'll take uh, Samuel L. Jackson every any day. <laughs> Hell yeah! yeah. I mean, <laughs> right? Yeah, you know, but you know, you can't see you can't see uh, Samuel Jackson's Knight Rider. You know? No, no way. Mm-mm. Yeah. No. I mean, one, it wouldn't even be on TV. Too many f words, you know. But <laughs> still, that's true. He's like, "F you, man! Open the damn door!" <laughs> well, now I think um, no. I think uh, Sam has embodied that character quite well. He did, yeah. Mm. Did you ever find no, out he was uh, how how he learned about the character? How he was gonna be in the movie? How they wanted him to well, be in the movie? The ultimate guys just kind of drew him into the comic, right? Yeah, so the other guys drew him in the comic, and he's a comic fan. And they actually said his name in the in the thing. Yeah, you know, if I was to have a movie played by me one day, I'd hope it's Samuel L. Jackson. And then he has like he told his agent about it. So his agent called Marvel, and then they, they called him back and said, "Yeah, they want you in the movie." Smart move. <laughs> so it worked. Yeah. No, I, I, he's been, he's really cool. Yeah, he was kind of a perfect little anchor uh, for the whole thing, I think. Yeah. And we are over time, and we are talking about Samuel Jackson, though, and that brings up the fact that the screening, they did a screening for Captain Marvel, and Samuel Jackson is not getting the rave reviews from... Uh, those people that possibly saw it. Uh, Brie Larson is not getting the rave reviews either. 
it's Goose the Cat that's getting rave reviews. Goose is? Oh my yes. god. Yes. You know, well, he's saying it, that he stole the alien. he's stealing he's stealing the show. Well, he's probably a CG giant monster, right? Probably. He's more I I, I can't I can't uh, say it. What do you mean you can't yeah. say it? <laughs> he's like the dog, right? Yeah, he's uh, gonna be Frank the Pug. Oh yeah, well no, I'm not, I'm not thinking of Frank the Pug. I'm thinking uh the other one, the Russian dog, uh that they sent in space. Cosmo. Cosmo, yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah, he's in charge of nowhere the uh Guardians of the Galaxy's uh yeah. base mm-hmm. here. Yeah. Now, yeah, at right. least they did a wink wink to him in the movie. That was kind of cool. Uh, but, that was uh, good. Yep. Yeah, but no, that doesn't sound good at all. Sam Jackson's not even Sam isn't getting uh, any uh, uh, reaction for people. Oh, I'm sure there's uh, some reaction, but the, the 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 big reaction is the cat it, in, instead of the uh, hero of the you know movie that the title is is, is based upon. Why are you surprised? Well, if you make it cute. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know what's going to happen next. It's going to be Goose, the cat, coming next fall. To a theater near you. Oh God, the morons! They might goose the cat, <laughs> getting rave reviews from crazy cat ladies. Yeah, Nick. Now I want to see Goose the Cat, Cosmo the dog, and taking on Thanos with the help of Howard the Duck. And we know oh, we the go. new the new Guardian of the Galaxy, Rack yes. Raccoon, <laughs> all Cosmo animals, the dog, all the time. All, the, and, and then, then you have the, Groot. Yeah. <laughs> after after a night with Howard the Duck, Thanos doesn't have a chance. I'm just gonna say, wow, that was a party to be partying all night long. <clears throat> yeah. mm. On that note, um, <laughs> I think we are definitely gonna have to end the show today. Um, uh, yeah. but uh, thank you guys all for coming and joining us. Uh, uh, uh glad to uh, have some fun news. Uh, uh, and that trailer was really good, I enjoyed that quite a bit. And of course, it's uh, nice sitting here talking to Brad about his book. Just keep in mind that uh, come at about 15 days, right? Uh, yeah, 15 days that's when we're going. Oh, so right. uh, I got a lot uh, of work to do, but yeah, 15 days. <laughs> well, the, the good thing about the Indiegogo is that um, you don't have to have every little thing done. You just need to have a lot of things done, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And to be honest with you, one of the things we've noticed over here uh, going through Indicron and, uh, and, and looking at the projects and just kind of talking to people, it's surprising to me how many of these creators go to Indiegogo with literally two or three pages? I mean, literally nothing done, nothing set up, nothing prepared. I don't get that thinking. I mean, uh, you know, yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I kind of was the same way the first time I ran through, you know, and I was like, oh, you know, I learned as I went on, you know, I thought, mm-hmm. oh, this should be enough, blah, blah, blah. No. You know, I, I'll be able to get on shows, get, you know, my name out there, blah, blah, blah. 60 days later is when it took off. <laughs> like it started taking off like the last couple of weeks. Yeah. I was like, if I would have known all this stuff earlier, <laughs> you well, know, sure. but sure. that's okay. You got to learn and you come back and regroup and you grow. And yeah. Well, so. we definitely want to sit and talk with you more. And we have a couple other creators I've talked to that were going to come on the show and uh, talk about, uh, their Indiegogo experiences, of course, uh, 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 the three of other of us here with DeWolf, Danelli, and myself, we're all part of the Tales from Beyond the Gate uh, project that's coming yep. out on on Valentine's Day here in a couple of weeks, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, we uh, the, we're we're really lucky because we've talked to so many people, we've gained information and knowledge so that our project won't make those mistakes. I'm sure we'll make some, but uh, um, in general, we'll always make some. Yeah. yeah, but you know, in general, we're kind of ahead of the curve on that. And with those projects, there's a lot of work that's been done. Now, uh, some more than others, there's a lot of stories, but uh, there is solid work and laid, uh, foundation has been laid down for that project going forward. Uh, so yeah. it's it's going to be really cool. Yeah. So we also have a lot of good experience on critiquing things because we yeah. do that often, we do. you know, as we talk about the news and stuff. So we turn around to each other and we just tell each other what, what they're doing sucks. No, no. And then they straighten right up again. So. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I mean, I haven't gotten that too bad yet. So, like, well, no, that <laughs> honesty you, is totally very. Sucks. Yeah. Well, no, that honesty is extremely important, dude. Oh, I, I no, I, yeah, I, I get it. You know, I've been asking and getting help from some pros around my area, things mm-hmm. like that. So, you know. Well, uh, just let me yeah, know, but... man. If you want some someone to insult your work, I, I'm I'm your boy. <laughs> insult my work. All right, cool. All right. <laughs> 
Now, I like I this thought, much yeah. better than the original, dude. I think this looks <clears throat> a lot better. Yeah, good, the original was, I was just kind of rushing, you know, a little bit, trying to get that feeling across, but it wasn't. It wasn't solidified. The artwork wasn't solidified like it is now. So. Did Trump give you a call because you were Russian? Trump? No, See, that's no, a really uh, bad. He didn't. No. Just, that no. was a very long ball. No, that, no, <laughs> Sorry, right. that was low hanging fruit. Did Wolf do better? No, the king caught me macking. You know it happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, oh, you guys are just really hurting me. Uh, I'm we're gonna grill up some mistakes. more. Thank you, Willie. Keep the stream Thank going. You. <laughs> all right all right well anyways thank you guys all for coming uh, a lot of fun sitting here chatting and uh, as usual every day mm -hmm. and uh of course i'm going to let denali uh, explain all the things we got coming up and what we're doing uh but i appreciate you guys and uh uh keep on coming back and chatting with us and interacting so uh, uh just keep in mind that uh brad's link has been dropped a few times we'll leave, uh, probably drop it again here in a second uh but definitely mm -hmm. go over to brad's channel check it out he does some really cool stuff and uh we will be of course continuing talking to brad about his project uh so other than that um denali take it away man all right well thank you for everybody for joining us and those in the panels as well um remember we don't have a show tomorrow because chester has to move his daughter uh, to our new apartment. Uh, we do have a show Sunday at 8 p.m. Uh, talking about books that we are reading mm. and, you know, enjoyed. And maybe you can check it out. And if you have any uh, books that you you guys are reading that you want us to talk about or that you're interested, uh, let us know uh, either in the comic section or on the Facebook page. Or, you know, Contact us directly and say, hey, we're reading this. What do you what are your thoughts about that? Or if you want to join us, hit us up as well and we'll have you on the stream and we can talk about comics as well because you know that's what we do. We love comics and we want to show what are what we are enjoying as well. Um, we have Bugs Bear Basement Tuesday at 8 p.m. We have the Pro Edition Wednesday at Blacklist Universe, and then the fan edition will be back on this channel 10 p.m next uh thursday the following saturday there will be no bunny vision movie night because we'll have fans speak that at that time and i don't know if we're gonna have a show that friday um, bunny vision movie night. yeah so the next bunny vision movie night it's gonna be bunny vision movie night. <laughs> bunny vision movie night it's gonna be in uh february 16 and the show and the movie we're gonna be watching is john wick chapter Ooh, one nice Yes. So, yes. Uh, but that is all for tonight. Um, thank you for joining us. And as always, your perception shapes your reality. So always make it a good one. Namaste. Namaste. God bless. Broil away. <laughs> Later, guys. Aloha. Broil that burger. This is Fan Speak, a weekly live show where the fans of comics and its community are our guests.